system. Um, it's a model that's been designed and built to suit a 1050 wide belt. The skirt panel itself comprises of a 10 thick bent plate with an end plate. The actual skirt rubber, which can be supplied either vertically, it can be clamped hard up against, or it can be curved, whichever the client requires. This one is curved, as we see, that's a skirt rubber. It can be 150 by 12 up to 300 by 16 thick uh, rubber. The actual liner adjuster bracket, which is inside here, the liner bolt, and the liner, which is only represented by a mild steel plate here. The actual clamp itself, which is a rotatable clamp, is a small angle which has a wedge welded to the actual clamp angle itself and it's held in place by a handle which is rotated around which we'll show you um, uh, later on in the demonstration. If we move back around and we'll just show the two liners that we've already raised. So these, although these bolts are shown like this, they, they're not normally like this, the countersunk or don head or whatever or the studs on the, on the liner plate, whichever. Um, these two liners here are elevated or shown to be higher so there's a bigger gap between the belt and the liner which would re uh, give you spillage, a spillage problem. I'm going to show you how quickly you can remove the rubber, adjust the height of those two liners and replace the rubber. It's done in a matter of one or two minutes. Um, so as we come back round, I won't do this as quickly as I could do it, but basically to remove the skirt rubber, these clamps are installed periodically along the length of the skirting system. We just rotate the handle around, we rotate this clamp, which releases the rubber. We move to the next one, we rotate that handle around, rotate the clamp around, which then in turn allows you to remove the rubber. We lift the rubber out. Okay, so what we're talking about now is adjusting the vertical height of the liners. The skirt panel itself has a slotted hole in it, as you can see there. The actual liner bolt comes through the liner, comes through the skirt panel, and through this liner adjuster bracket, which has got a circular hole in it. It's fastened with the liner nut, and the liner adjuster bracket is held in place via this M12 bolt. In the top of this uh, liner adjuster bracket, there's a tapped hole, which you can see just the uh, the screw coming through there. So once we've loosened off this bolt, bolt uh, nut and this nut, we can then lower them with this ratchet. How we lower them is by placing the ratchet on. You can see the gap that's already existing between this liner and that liner. All that I'm going to do is just turn this ratchet. We'll start with this one. see it uh, lowering we got that, that side's lowered and we go to this side and we lower this side nice and quickly so as you can see that liner is lowered for this as you can see now all these three liners are about the same height you'd normally get the right height with a welding rod stuck between them while you load them but as we pan back round you'll see that that third liner now that we've lowered, we've lowered that one down so that they're all now flush. Okay, all that's required now is we've got to go back round and put the skirt rubber on. Put the skirt rubber on, it's a simple procedure. Slide it in. Drop it in place. Make sure we're happy with the gap there. Lift it up against the actual bent plate. Rotate that around, finger tight. Hold that in place, rotate that around, rotate the clamp around. Make sure we're happy with that. If we're not, just lift it a little bit, lift it a little bit more if need be. Lift it a little bit more there if need be. And just lock it nice and tight. There you have the easy maintenance skirt clamping system. In general, to do something like that would take you a couple of minutes. With that, the way we've described it, it's taking a little bit longer. But you can see how simple it is. While I've got you, what I'm going to show you now is our drop-down idler, which we supply to BHP, Hammersley and Robe. Do you have a look over here? The actual drop-down idler has a central frame and supports two rollers. One roller there, one roller there. Very difficult to replace worn rollers when the bearings have gone. It creates an unnecessary gap between the skirt rubber, skirt liners. Very hard to get those out.
our design incorporates an operating tool which we slide into the bracket, take the wheels, the actual system is designed to be held by a pin on each side of the conveyor. This is in, held in place with an R clip. We pull the R clip off, the R clip. We take the weight of the frame on the, on the operator tool, we move the pin and slowly lower the actual idler down. If you just zoom in a bit more on that to see the gap, if you zoom in, I'll just show you that, see how easy this is. I can use one hand, if you just look at the operating tool here, just one hand, that's how simple it is. This is a 1050 wide belt, it can be moved up and down with ease. Then all you need to do is you can actually change out, you see the gap, this is about a 100 mil gap and the gap between the central roller is about 70 at the far side. All you need to do is lift the roller out the height from there to there to slide it out, which can be done quite simply. As you can see I can lift that out nice and easily, I'm not going to do that. I can do the same with the central roller, I can lift that out also. Once you've replaced the rollers and put them back in place, you can do them all. All you need to do then is raise the actual idler itself and put the, that back in place, move the operating tool and then put the pin in place, which is done in a matter of, of minutes. You just knock that in with the actual operating tool, just make sure it's knocked in place. There you go. And that's how drop down idler so you, as you can see that's another option for you to look at but first and foremost the easy maintenance skirt uh, clamping system and line adjusting system is what we like to you to consider thank you very much